Hi, I'm Teresa Frosini. And I'm Kyle Noonan, and this is Local Fair. Did you know Dallas alone has almost 3,000 restaurants? Between the food trucks, fast food places, and chic gourmet cafes, it gets a bit overwhelming when dinner time comes around. That's where we come in. We ask three everyday diners to suggest their favorite restaurant, then have the other two go for a visit and tell us what they think. That's right. We aren't using professional restaurant critics. We ask everyday people to give us their thoughts on what's hot and what's not in the world of restaurants. We've got a fresh selection of restaurants waiting, so let's see what's cooking this week right here on Local Fair. As always, we're here at Bowl and Barrel, where you can bowl a few frames or just grab a bite to eat. It's the perfect location also for our reviewers to talk about this week's restaurants. So here's Teresa with this week's guests. Okay, so this week we brought in three people from the DFW area who suggested their favorite restaurant for the others to go for a visit, come back here, and tell us what they think. Our guests this week are Matt Lampo, a salesman from Dallas who suggested CBD provisions. Ashley Burkhart, a handbag designer from Dallas, who suggested Little Sheep Mongolian Hot Pot. And Jeanette Breen, a medical sales rep, also from Dallas, who wanted the group to try Casa Vieja. Located in the heart of historic downtown Dallas, our first restaurant focuses on local and seasonal ingredients to create the perfect modern Texas brasserie. Hi, my name is Michael Sandoni. I'm the executive chef of CBD Provisions in downtown Dallas. CBD is a downtown browsery. It has a very lively urban feel to it. The food at CBD Provisions pays tribute to the various food cultures of Texas, while at the same time moving it forward in a way that is, represents a modern and contemporary point of view. As much as possible, we use locally sourced organic produce. We use all heritage meats and all of our seafood comes from the Gulf. Our cocktails are updated versions of classic cocktails with some original regional inspired seasonal cocktails. Our beer program is based almost entirely on Texas craft beers. We have 16 drafts, 14 of which are from Texas. It's very energetic, it's fun, but at the same time it's warm and inviting and it's not at all pretentious. Okay, Matt. Tell me about CBD Provisions. What does that mean, first of all? CBD Provisions, CBD stands for Central Business District. Okay. Provisions in the Jewel Hotel, downtown, on Main Street, making a comeback. Nice. Love it. Love what do you it. like to eat there? Uh, my favorite dish is the Wagyu rib steak. Mm. It's a terrible, tough cut of meat. <laughs> it sounds so appetizing. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it is, a, it is a very tough cut of meat. It's not your typical filet or ribeye. Uh, they take it and they sous vide it for 48 hours. And sous vide is, means to under vacuum, I think in French, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. And they put it in a water oven and they cook it for 48 hours. And it just breaks it down. Wow. And it is mouth watering. Is that the one that you is. have to share? Or is that yeah. Kind of, oh, no. It's really you, big, right? You're, you're more that, of a yeah. man than me if you can take it down. You get a shirt. So. You have to take it all down you by yourself. Yeah. You get a t-shirt. Yeah. You get to yeah. eat there for free for life. <laughs> did you try this? I did. I tried that. We went there for a friend's birthday a while back and we ordered and it was quite a large portion and we all shared and it was it was like melt in your mouth, just oh, fall gosh. apart. You know, I have to be honest with you, I like to go there for the cocktails and the dessert. Those nice. two are okay. my favorite. The, the food is really good, but the cocktails are so unique. Um, I mean, the flavors that they add in there. I had a drink, I can't remember, oh, it was called the Good Word. Good Word. <laughs> um, yes, and it was a mezcal, and it had um, some, some very unique things that I don't really remember how to pronounce that they said were really hard to find, which basically <laughs> give it like a, a bitter flavor. It was also kind of smoky, and it was spicy, which I really like. What are the, some of the go-to desserts for Oh, it? oh, here By she far. <laughs> The best dessert was the caramel bread pudding. I mean, do you see her face? I, it's got a little caramel uh, on there with, with a little salt taste nice. to it. So, and I love the sweet and, and salty kind of thing, sweet and sour, sweet and salty love combination. It. So, love I mean, it. 15 out of 10, uh, amazing. She loves it. What did you have when you were there, Ashley? Oh gosh, I ate a ton of stuff when I was there. The Cuban sandwich is really good. It's kind of got the spicy sweet thing that you were talking about because it has bread and butter pickles and then a jalapeno mustard. And you've had that. Oh yeah. And you know, it's so crunchy, it's delicious. And then one of my favorite things we did was a wild mushroom um, grits. Okay. And like not heavy, like you think of grits, when I think of grits, I'm thinking like a lot of cheese and like Creamy. really heavy, right. but it was like really light and had a bunch of herbs in there and like super rich and the mushrooms were roasted and like. And they had a special when we were there Thursday night and it was a 
beef heart pastrami. Oh yeah, that was good. Mm. Wow. It, actual beef heart, and yeah. it was unbelievable. Wow, yeah. it sounds very unique. It very does. unique. Yeah. It is. Let's rank this one, the scale of one to five, and then what also was your favorite thing that you had? Um, okay, so I'd say a four and a half, and then they have a seasonal hummus, and so it, this time right now, it's, it used to be carrots, now it's peas, and it had a goat cheese in it, it has like their toast with it, and it was, oh my god, it's so creamy and delicious, like really flavorful, that was, how would you rate this one? Um, I agree, four and a half, the service was also really good, the environment, the ambiance, the lighting, right. I mean, they've got the, uh, what do you call those, those, uh, those, the Edison light bulbs, they've uh -huh. got those throughout. Yeah. It creates a really kind of tranquil mood. My favorite dessert was definitely <laughs> the caramel <laughs> bread pudding. The inappropriate <laughs> bread pudding. <laughs> yes. Right. Matt, how about for you? Obviously uh, you love I, it. I'm gonna go with a five. Okay. Uh, the guys with Conciliate Restaurant Group did a fantastic job setting up that place. Um, and my favorite dish is that Wagyu rib steak. Perfect, thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, Excellent. When we come back, we'll visit a place that stems back hundreds of years to the nomadic Mongols and serves as the forerunner to modern fondue. It is fun, it's delicious, and this is healthy. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back to Local Fair, where we take three regular DFW restaurant diners, have them suggest their favorite restaurant, have the other two go for a visit, and then they all come back here and tell us what they think. Ashley Burkhart says, Little Sheep Mongolian Hot Pot is a unique dining experience that focuses on healthy ingredients to create an authentic Asian delicacy. My name is Hong. I'm the general manager of Mongolian Hot Pot. We're located on 240 Legacy Drive, and we will welcome you all the time. We serve hot pot. Basically, it's a kind of like Chinese style fondue. The ingredients of hot pot will be all fresh and raw meat, so you can choose whatever you like. The most important thing of the hot pot is the base. We use 30 something kind of Chinese herbs, very rich chicken broth, and some fresh ingredients like garlic, ginger, green onion, all you can eat, you are just paying one fixed price and you have 50 different items to choose. You can try out everything. Easier for the first time. We do have a full bar. We are pretty model. It is fun. It's delicious. This is healthy. Okay, Ashley. Little Sheep Mongolian Hot Pot. Could they yeah. put one more name <laughs> in that restaurant? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about this restaurant and why it's your, one of your favorites. Okay, so I have to give a backstory on this. I used to live in New York and every single Tuesday, my group of friends would go and eat hot pot down in Chinatown. And it was like the most amazing experience. Okay. So whenever I moved to Dallas, I was like, I have to find, I have to find hot pot around here. So my husband and I have gone all around. I mean, you've come to multiple ones with us. We've gone all around trying to find hot pot. And this to me is the closest one to the one that I went to in New York okay. because you get your big pot in the middle. Like you can do just spicy or just vegetable or you can do half and half, which I always do half and half, so you can do both. And that's your broth. Okay. So it's kind of like an Asian version of fondue. Okay. So you've got your broth and then you just order all these different plates, like whatever meats, vegetables, like sauces, whatever you want to go in there, noodles, rice, whatever. And you cook it in the pot. And nice. then you, you kind of like make your own plate. And it's like really great for groups. Like it's really interactive. You have a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> and don't wear a white shirt. Or anything you want to keep clean. Yeah, they, you should, they, okay. should so give, they should give you bibs. You should get a shirt. Did you need a bib in. when oh, you were absolutely. there? absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't matter where I go. I get in a fight with my food and lose every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God. So tell me about your experience when you had gone. Because you'd gone before, obviously. Well, once our once our flight landed <laughs> in North Dallas, uh, <laughs> it was fantastic. We was um, they had a shaved. Uh, what did we have? Shaved the like lamb shoulder. Yes. It was fantastic. It's super super thin. Okay. Uh, cooks very quickly. Uh, so you can just literally dunk it in and then pull it's it out. Right it's medium yeah. rare, just as much as you want. Uh, the mushroom plate was spectacular. Yeah, we had the mushroom sampler. Uh, so, I mean, so good. How many different types of mushrooms? There were like five or five six or different six. types yeah. of mushrooms on yeah. there. Wow. So yeah. good. 
How about, what did you like the most? The mushrooms are definitely my favorite food item there. Um, I liked how they gave you these little sauces to pass around just in case you wanted to add them or you could not. Some were spicy and some weren't as spicy. And I, I love sauce. I mean, I'm saucy so all the way. Spicy yeah. The Mayo Mai was the one that we were like obsessed with. That we oh, really we had to like get seconds. Yeah. So many things you can add to it and try. So it's kind of fun. It's, it's like an adventure. It's, everybody puts everything in the pot. So yeah, you all have to be in agreement. Got but it. just because you put it in the pot doesn't mean you get to get it out. You don't overload the pot because then things can't cook as fast, right. okay. you know. Yeah. Certain things you want to make sure they cook for a while. Like they have a lot of like fish balls and like meatball, different things. It, yeah. I, there's a long list of rules I won't go Wow. It was a little weird to me how, how the shaved meat comes frozen because I don't know, it was just unusual to have like frozen wow. yes. meat that you kind of pick apart and, and the chicken, you know, it's scary to cook chicken when you can't see it and you're like, I think right. it's ready, so. I love it's, your word where you said it's like an adventure. I it is, that. yeah. You're how like, would, what's this? How does this taste? Let's find out. Yeah. How would you rate this one on a scale from one to five? Um, I would give it a four. A four. Yeah. And the mushrooms you said were your favorite. They were amazing, the noodles, right. yeah. Matt, how about for you? I'm gonna give it a strong four. A strong four. Strong four, yeah, I'm gonna give it a strong four. What's your favorite, the lamb? The lamb, absolutely. And okay. the spicy broth, just. Obviously you love this. I and do. I, and I love the fact that it's close to New York. I mean, that sounds yeah. excellent. Yeah. How would you rate this one? I'd give it a four and a half. Okay. I'll do a four and a half. Because I have my expectations. <laughs> you know, like once you've tried one thing first, that's yeah. like your ultimate favorite. But this is like so close to it that I give it a four and a half. Cool. And it, All right, thanks so much. When we come back, we'll visit a family-owned restaurant with a relaxed atmosphere that complements its traditional Colombian cuisine. And we just have our customers and they, you know, they say, oh, I feel like I'm in my country. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bull and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bull and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back. Our last restaurant was suggested by Jeanette Breen, who says, Casa Vieja has amazing food that reminds her of home. Hola, my name is Carolina Patino, and this is Casa Vieja Restaurant over in 1927 East Beltline Road, Suite 152, Carrollton, Texas. It's all Colombian food. Our most popular dish is called Bandeja Paisa, and it has rice and beans, fried pork skin, sausage, an egg, avocado, plantain, and the arepa. We have fruit drinks, pineapple, guava. We also have margaritas in the same flavors if you want them. Mojitos are excellent here. Friday nights, we have live music from 7.30 till 10. On Saturday nights is the party from 9 till 1. So it's a full salsa, merengue, cumbia, boleros, reggaeton, everything. We've been here for almost 19 years. You know, the music, the food, the language, the ambiance. A little piece of Colombia. Okay, I love the name, Casa Vieja. Tell me a little bit of why this is your favorite. Well, um, I'm Dominican. My mom's from the Dominican Republic, and I grew up with that side of the family, and we grew up in New York. So I was raised with rice, beans, plantains, avocados, seasoned meat, things like that. So I stumbled upon Ca Casa Vieja, luckily, right when I came here. And um, Casa Vieja means old house. It's really nice in there, the atmosphere. Um, and it really tastes like home for me. I mean, the way they make the rice is just the way my grandmother makes it. You know, the beans. So it's really similar to Dominican food, and it definitely. And really, like, takes you back home. I it love does. that. I love that. It Matt, does. what did you think when you went in there? Uh, I've been in there a couple of times, actually, okay. with, with Jeanette both times. And um, very, very traditional, very mm -hmm. simple. Um, Home style. I mean, it's yeah. that's about the best way to describe it. Some of the things that you ordered there that you that we you had, really enjoyed. Uh, they had little uh, empanadas that were mm. fantastic, mm -hmm. and then I had the uh, what was it called the uh, picada it? casa vieja, oh, and it was a massive plate of meat, 
it had, they called it black sausage, which is more of a blood sausage, which is kind of hard to find. Steak, chicken, shrimp, pork. pork. Mm. I mean, they had little ribs on there. Ah, oh, it was so good. Every, yeah. 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 They yeah. should have called it meat plate. That's actually what that means. Oh, <laughs> sure. In Columbia. Well, it sounds a little better with the way. I got the bandeja paisa, which is like a traditional Colombian plate. It has everything I grew up with, rice, beans, avocado, some meat on it, not a lot, like not as much as his plate, a little corn, uh, frittata thing on the side, yeah. and uh, sweet plantains, which without sweet plantains, it is not a Latin dish to me. And we forgot to mention the sauces that come with the empanadas and just oh, yeah. with everything. It's like, a, 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 unlike Mexican food, it's like a vinaigrette, vinegar based sauce right. with uh, onion, cilantro, garlic, tomatoes, and it's just so flavorful. And, I mean, I, I was eating it with a spoon. <laughs> Like I didn't even have chips, no, nothing. Hot pot sauce. No, we didn't, we, didn't even, we didn't even make it. They didn't. They didn't bring any food out yet, and we had to order more because Jeanette ate it. I just ate it with a spoon. Well, like that's how it. good it's it is. Okay, and he was like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Get off me! Let, leave me alone." <laughs> I really like the raspberry mango margarita, the swirl. Mm. That's always yes. kind of a spin on your mambo taxi that we yeah, all get yeah. here. But then the empanadas, like they were really. Like they were stuffed full. Like you'll go yeah. a lot of places and it's like mostly just like the breading, like the dough. Right. But I mean, they were so full exactly. of everything. And like they have fresh juices and mm -hmm. all this. I mean, like their mm. drinks are amazing and the atmosphere, yeah. like she said. And like the service too. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of more like slow, relaxed. All right, how would you rate this one on a scale from one to five? And your favorite? Uh, four. And what was your favorite? Was it the margarita? The margarita. I love it. Sure. Matt, have it for you. I'm going to give it a four as well. They had a little. I, I, I don't know what they what they call it. It was like a little pot de creme. It was like a oh, uh, the, I to keep it. I to keep it. I wanted that I wanted to slather that stuff on me and lick myself <laughs> to death. I mean, it was okay. it was on that note. It was, it was that good. Really good dessert. Hello. I'm afraid. Like I know it's a five for you. I'm sure. It's a ten. It's a it's ten. A million. All right. Well, thank you for rec yes. for recommending it. I won't go with Matt. You can't leave. All right. Okay. No. okay. I just got a visual. I love it. Do you have a visual? And did one of these meals sound great to you? Well, when we come back, our restaurant expert Kyle Noonan is going to show you how you can make one of these tasty dishes all on your own, not on you. Stay with us. <laughs> If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. All right, gang, welcome back. We're coming to you, as always, at the beautiful Landmark on Lovers Demo Kitchen, where I love to cook, and I'm going to show you tonight how to make one of the dishes we talked about on this week's episode. We talked about a stone ground and wild mushroom grits that is just really fantastic, and we're going to get started right away. What I have is a pot here that's going on medium-high heat, and I'm going to just throw a knob of butter in there, and you can see it's already kind of smoking. We want that butter to get nice and brown. It gives us a nice, warm rich, nutty flavor. And then I'm going to take some of these mushrooms. And these mushrooms, probably not mushrooms you're used to seeing. We have right here a lady of the hen, wild mushroom. We have some oyster mushrooms. And then you guys are used to seeing shiitake mushrooms. Now, I'm going to teach you how to prep these. These are very easy. You see these oyster mushrooms. You have this big, rough, kind of knotty base on there. I'm just rip that off with my hands. That's all I'm going to do. I don't need to I don't need to wash, you know, you wash these things and you wash out all the flavors. If there is a lot of dirt, you can run it under some cool water, but hopefully if you buy it at a good store, you don't really need to do that. And all you're going to do is take these and go right in the pan. That butter is already nice and burned, which will give it a nice nutty brown flavor, which is delicious. And then let me show you how to do these Lady of the Hen mushrooms. All you're going to do is just kind of take a small knife and cut them into bite-sized chunks. You can really use the whole thing. Again, that has a nice woody flavor that just is really aromatic and really robust when, when you cook it in this brown butter. And then we're going to take, lastly, shiitakes. Now, I've already pulled out some of the caps from the stems. These stems are very tough. And then we're going to take these caps, cut them again into just bite-sized chunks, and throw those in the pan, too. And we're just going to cook those down until they get tender. And they're pretty close to tender right now. Um, give it a quick little stir. 
real rich flavor of the mushrooms and the butter kind of coming together. Now at this point I like to take a little bit of salt, just a little pinch of salt. So those are looking pretty good. Now all we're going to do now is take a little bit of chicken stock again. You can use store-bought. I typically do when I'm cooking at home. At the restaurants we're, we're usually cooking with homemade chicken stock, but you just take that chicken stock and let that integrate all those flavors come together just like that. Now, while well, that's coming up to a nice simmer, I'm going to tell you about grits. Now, these are also known as polenta in Italy. They cook it a little differently, but we're in the south here, so we cook grits here. And all we're going to do is take these stone ground grits that you can buy at any supermarket, and they're so easy to cook. And you just add them to the liquid there. About two and a half cups. You're going to mix that up and make sure that it's all worked in that juice. Oh, this is already starting to come together. And it's just going to hang out for about 15, 20 minutes till the grits become tender. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. Looks like it's coming together just nicely. Now, to finish this off, we're just going to take a little bit more butter and a little bit of heavy cream. And this is what makes it really creamy and good. So we're going to integrate those just to finish it off and give that nice butter creamy flavor to it. And while that's mixing up, all we're going to do is get our garnish ready. I like to garnish this. You know, mushrooms and thyme are a really good flavor combination. I, I love those flavors, the way they work together. So we have a few thyme sprigs. And one of the things I like to do is take one of these thyme sprigs just kind of hold it against the grain like this and run your fingers down it to pop those leaves off and hit some fresh herbs in there. Makes it so good and then we'll finish the plate with a little bit more thyme as well. It's about all you need, about two sprigs worth just to give it that nice fresh herbal flavor. And while that comes together, we're going to get our bowl and serve it up. And there is nothing wrong with this dish. You can really f smell that, that nice, oaky, woody flavor of the mushrooms and the creaminess of the grits. It almost has kind of a sweet flavor, too, the way it ends up working out. And then just kind of pile that up right there in the center of the bowl. And then for a little bit of color and a little bit of flavor, I'd recommend a little bit more salt, just a pinch, a pinch of black pepper, and then Go ahead and garnish it with a sprig of thyme too, why not? You already have it. And when that hits your table, you get the nice smell of those fre that fresh thyme and the creaminess of the grits and the oakiness and woodiness of the mushrooms. Fantastic dish. So that's it for this week. And if you would like to be a guest on Local Fair, visit us on our website at localfairdfw.com or check us out on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you for joining us and remember to get out and enjoy your local fair. <laughs>